So in the last episode, I talked about how it is just time to look for a new building. So I did a few things. I reached out to my commercial realtor and we started touring different properties. It looks like we found one. Then I needed to reach out to a mortgage broker and I gave Diana Halal a call. Since then, we put a lot of paperwork together. It's time to meet up with her and see how much I can afford. So after seeing the building, I was given a little homework. I reached out to a commercial mortgage broker named Diana Halal that came highly recommended. We chatted on the phone. I supplied her with some initial documentation, and now it's her job to show me all of my options. You will see here that you could do two options. I, I got you the SBA 504, 10% okay. down, meaning 250 down, and I'll bring in a, a conventional lender and an SBA to finance you up to 90%. So now, it's two loans. Two loans. Okay. So that could be a little bit confusing. Um, for me, it's easy because I do this for a living. But for you, you got to understand that we're going to run a parallel process all the time through your escrow timeline, where I'm going to have a bank in connection also with the SBA. Okay, option one is to get two loans, one held by a private bank and the other held by the SBA, also known as the Small Business Administration. Now, I already do enough business with the federal government and arguably don't quite get the value out of the taxes that I pay. So I'm already not liking this option of voluntarily working with a federal agency. And also there's some fees. Mm -hmm. So SBA does not do stuff for free. Okay. So they're great at their 90% funding, but they need their money. Okay. So there's about three and a half point in fees that you need to be ready for wow. to pay. Now this is finance into the deal. Okay. So basically what the government does is say, okay, Jay, we're gonna give you a million dollar. They're gonna charge you about 2.65% in fees and another <laughs> half a point loan fee, call it, lender participation fee, which is your bridge loan. And those together are about three, three and a quarter. Lender participation fee. It sounds so nice and inclusive to let them charge me about $35,000 so they can participate in my business. So so basically I'm, I'm using, I'm financing a bunch of uh, extra costs and I'm paying for these extra costs over the next 25 years, it's amortized over 25 years, for the privilege of doing business with the SBA, essentially. Correct. And the complications and the, the, time, the longer timeline. Uh, heck no, hard no, full stop. Next in line, please. I already don't like that. <laughs> Let's talk conventional. Let's talk Okay, let me tell you a little bit yeah. about the conventional and then we'll come back and compare. Okay. So the conventional will be Extremely simple. Okay. If you have the 25% down, uh -huh. my job is to go get you 75% funding. Okay, now we're talking. She had me at the word simple. So what about fees attached to conventional? There's really no fees to a lender um, coming wholesale as a loan broker. So my lenders will do par pricing. I charge 1% loan fee as a loan broker. Those are my services that I um, collect at the end when we close. Um, my bank, my lenders will not. Mm -hmm. They promise me under market pricing as far as interest rate and they'll do everything at par pricing. So right now with SBA, it was about three and a half points. Correct. And so that goes away. It's just the 1% to you. Correct. That's okay. That's Correct. reasonable. So not only does a conventional loan with a bank have no fees, but Diana makes her money off of the 1% I pay her, but she has access to wholesale rates. So it's pretty close to a wash. Now, even if using a broker ends up to be a little more expensive than going direct to a bank, this is my first time purchasing commercial property, and I will always and gladly pay an experienced professional to guide me and educate me through the process. It's really worth every penny to have rock stars on your team. So what are next steps? What do you need from me? You have all my documentation. Yes, uh, so now I just wanted to confirm the product yep. with you and make sure you're comfortable with me as well, handling all that for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm gonna email you 
this afternoon the just the application okay. for the three lenders that I have. Just initial and sign. I'll have everything ready and highlighted for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that's it. And wow. we'll go to uh, we'll go to submission as early as tomorrow. Okay. I work pretty fast, so we get it going. The big takeaways are that an SBA loan is not for me and that the years of saving for a down payment and going with a conventional loan with a bank is the way to go to streamline the process, to have lower fees and to get the best interest rates. Well, thanks for your time. I'll reach out to Will, let us know that uh, we met. Yeah, of course. So excited, I can't wait. Yeah, great. Sounds great. Take care, of course. Nice to meet you. Hi, Diana. Jay, how are you? Doing great. What's the latest? Good, good, good. good. I have great news. Okay. As promised, uh, within that week. So not only we got one approval, but we got three. I'm really, really excited for you. Great. Um, so, but I think we are going to pick one today. Uh, I think you're going to like this one. Um, the one that ex- worked exactly what you've asked for. We got a rate of 2.90% for 10 year fixed rate, Jay. We got to negotiate the prepayment penalty and I got you the down payment you need. It's not quite the 20, but we're right there. We're at 22%. I don't think it's a big deal. We could put 2% more down, but this is exactly what you were looking for. This is great news. One of the things we didn't show in our discussion was that the one downside to a conventional private loan is that they typically require a minimum of 25% down and most often 30%. So with Diana negotiating the down payment requirement to 22%, I've saved between $75,000 and $200,000 that now stays in the company. Oh, and the icing on that cake is that 2.9% interest rate, which means if inflation rises beyond 3% annualized, it will essentially be almost like a 0% loan. Now that's what economists call free money. Great. I love it. Thanks, Diana. Thanks for all your hard work. That's that's great news. Yeah. Excited to take you to the finish line. Thanks for the trust. Great. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. So lending is secured, but it's nowhere near a done deal. So since this call, Diana let my realtor know he's relayed the info to the listing broker and we've been waiting to hear the decision from the seller. So I just got a text from Will asking me to give him a call and i don't know what to think at this point hey jay hey will i heard you have some news what's the latest so that offer that we sent then was accepted yeah no way really yeah man wow we got in there we got in there early man uh congratulations to you and your wife oh Um, i appreciate you trusting me getting the offer in that quickly because yeah. we got in there really quickly we found that building early on the market and uh, jumped on it right yeah away. great uh it, are they asking for anything did the counter uh, i mean are there any catches to it no no we're good to go great okay man that's a great way to end the day so all right will thanks for all your hard work man i really appreciate it okay no problem all right um, so look out for the email from escrow and then uh, we'll, we'll go from there give me a shout if you need sounds good thanks brother All right. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. So the seller has approved the sale and I'm marking this day, February 15th, 2020 as the day my wife and I officially enter escrow on our own building. I mean, I've been grinding in business and have been sacrificing and saving up a down payment over so many years with the goal of this moment. Now the finish line is finally in sight. And again, I don't see any significant things that could go wrong that would affect the sale of this building. So I bet I'm probably gonna sleep great tonight. Therefore, my administration is recommending that all Americans, including the young and healthy, work to engage in schooling from home when possible, avoid gathering in groups of more than 10 people, avoid discretionary travel, and avoid eating and drinking at bars, restaurants, and public food courts. If everyone makes this uh, change or these critical changes and sacrifices now, we will rally together as one nation 
and we will defeat the virus. Well, so much for nothing going wrong. Um, I think this lockdown order will have far greater implications in business and society than just buying this building. Now I'm starting to rethink everything. So um, I texted Will to discuss our options. Hey, Will, thanks for calling me back. I appreciate it. Yeah, Jay, no problem at all. Um, what's going on? What you, what you got going? Uh, you know, I obviously the country just got shut down. Um, usually I'm cool, calm, collected in business, but I'm kind of freaking out right now. I feel like I'm on the verge of making the worst financial decision of my life. And I just figured I'd talk to you first and just let you know how I'm feeling about this whole deal moving forward or not moving forward. So. Yeah, no, no, I understand. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot, it's a lot happening out there and, uh, you know, it's a lot of uncertainty as well. So I definitely understand you there. Mm -hmm. Um, what, what, can you tell me a, a little bit about, uh, some of the things that you're concerned about? Yeah. I mean, so the money that I've saved up for the down payment, if, if this goes bad, if we go into an economic downturn, I'm going to want that money in my pocket. Um, also, if we move forward on this deal and I'm out the down payment, you know, um, the cheerleading facility, they're going to be leasing back to me. And what if they go out of business? Then I've got a lease at my existing location and a mortgage on the new building. And so those, it's, it's just a lot of money flowing away from me, not towards me. No, I definitely understand that. Um, you know, and with regards to the uh, deposit, you know, we'll we'll make sure if any event, if anything happened to in which you, you know, couldn't go through with the deal, uh, to make sure you get your deposit back. Right, we're we're still well within our uh, contingency period there. So now, once the offer was accepted, the first check I had to write was a three percent earnest money deposit. This locked in the offer. And if I back out now, there may be a chance that I lose a $75,000 deposit. Again, I'm just glad that I'm working with professionals that are able to put my mind at ease. You know, this is a good company, you know, tier four. So let me, let me see if I can uh, talk to the tenants, see, see what's going on with their business. And then um, I'll go over and talk to the other side, the other broker and see if there's something that we can do. Uh, with regards to uh, some credits um, uh, to, to to help with that with the lease payment uh, moving forward, credits uh, to, to, to a credit at the close of escrow. So what we could do is take some of our commission uh -huh. uh, off from the buyer and the seller side, um, a portion, whatever that percent that we both agree upon, okay, and uh, we could credit that to the buyer, which is you, mm -hmm. at the close of escrow. So this is interesting. If I read between the lines, I'm not the only one potentially freaking out right now with these shutdowns. If both real estate agents are willing to cut their commissions to keep me in the deal, I might just want to lean on all the other parties as well. I mean, I'm the one with all the skin in the game. And if I'm in the driver's seat, they're going with me. Okay. Well, if you could get any seller, uh, well, no buyer credits, I mean, that would really help me weather whatever storm is coming financially. Uh, could you call the broker now and just see, run that by him and call me back? Well, yeah, for sure. I'm going to give him a call, but what it, what it would be, it wouldn't be a credit from the, from the, uh, from the seller. It would be, it would be, it would be both. Right. So we would come up on the, on our side, I'm, the, the brokers okay. as well as the seller and uh, put, put, uh, put some funds in. So that way we can help out. With okay. The, with the, that, yeah, that makes that. sense. However, it can okay. make this deal okay. happen. Yeah. That confirms it. It sounds like both real estate agents and the seller are worried about the exact same thing and everyone's starting to freak out. So I can't forget the purpose of buying this building. This is a long-term investment to further secure the long-term needs of the company. That means if it's a good decision 10 years from now, it's a good decision today. You know, it reminds me, there's a famous quote from Warren Buffett that says, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. I think this is one of those defining times in life 
where the little guy needs to step it up and take on the Goliath. It turns out capitalism is alive and very well. So for all those predictions of doom and gloom six months in, here's where we stand. Record growth, record job creation. We're seeing broad recovery across you know, virtually every sector of the economy. The tri-state area will soon allow nearly all businesses to open at full capacity. Home prices are up, rentals are up, and people are stretching and stretching to buy more and more stuff. The markets are feeling it. Is it safe to say we are clearly in recovery? 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 Wow. What a crazy experience. So the deal moved forward. The cheerleading company kept the doors open for the past 16 months. And I just did a final walkthrough with them and the building is empty and the floors are broom clean. So now it's time to get my contractors to start running electrical, get the walls painted and the floors epoxied. Our lease expires at our soon to be old location in four weeks. And because we're not renewing, the month to month cost in the lease jumps to 150% of the base lease rate. So we got to hustle. Here we are, it's Monday morning. Um, let me talk you through how things have been going. So um, going about two weeks back, we had the painters scheduled to start on a Thursday, possibly Friday. Um, Thursday came and went, they were wrapping another job. Friday came and went, still thought, hey, maybe they just ran over. Monday happens, no painters. So I got on the phone with my general contractor, said, where are these guys? miscommunication so right now we're possibly two three days behind talking with the painter we said look we pay you top dollar there's things in place contracts this needs to get done no grace period it just absolutely needs to get done because the next step after paint is epoxy so they came and worked on a Saturday um, they brought extra the, like I think the painting company's full crew was here on like a, a Thursday and a Friday still didn't finish but as you can tell, the painting is now done. So we went with a sheen, not flat, not eggshell, but a velvet. It's a really beautiful color. I like it because when you look at it, it really makes the machines pop. You don't feel the walls. It's not as like, like as tight of a work environment. It's a really comfortable area to work in. You know, if you were to paint a room black, uh, like your bedroom, you would probably feel it, the darkness closing around you. Not here, because that's contrasted with a lot of the lighting. So one of the things that the contractors or the electricians have been working on is the lighting. Keep in mind, this was a um, cheerleading facility. You don't need a permit to move or repair any existing electrical. So we had circuits that were either off or in disrepair. We moved them and we placed them on the walls. The lighting went up, rose right above the, the doors of the machines. You don't wanna cast a shadow into the machine, so they are about, depending on the exact position of the machine, uh, 12 to 18 inches behind or away from the face. So you get that good overhead lighting. Of course, machines have interior lighting, but it just works well, especially if you have a cart adjacent to the machine, like we have our U-shaped cells. That's, that's a lean principle, U-shaped cells. Starting stack, machine, finishing stack, no bending over, no moving. Everything on carts, we're only pivoting. That's a really easy, ergonomic, comfortable way to work. We wanna make work comfortable and enjoyable. Good, bright lighting was essential. So the other thing is, I don't like fluorescence. So they are a pain in the butt to get rid of. They burn out, you have to manage the ballast, you have to replace them. Um, the contractors, the electrical contractor went through and took out all the ballasts and wired direct their LED bulbs that just run straight off 
110 voltage. So no need to have any ballast or, or anything. It's just straight bulb. It's like sticking a plug, uh, sticking a bulb in a, in a socket as if it had a plug. It would just turn on, um, internally managed. So that's really nice. So when you contrast lots of good uh, 5K Kelvin temperature light bulbs against black walls, it works. So today is day one of the epoxy treatment. To get the epoxy to stick to the ground, you have to do some type of treatment to the concrete itself. So step one is go around all the perimeters and grind it with a diamond grinding wheel. What that does is it cleans off any impurities and it also abrades the concrete so there's a mechanical bond of the epoxy fluid with the concrete. So if we did it on these floors, which are very smooth concrete floors, it would crack, it might pop. It's just a pain to really uh, attach epoxy to an untreated floor. When you go to do this, there's chemical etching or there's physical like abrading the surface. So this is actually a two-step um, they actually, it's kind of three steps. So the first step is diamond grind the small little niche areas. The second is my contractor is opting to use the gold standard of concrete preparation, which is shot blasting. Think of a sand blasting cabinet that has a vacuum that pulls up all the debris that you roll on the ground. That's exactly what happens. So it's going to mechanically etch this and that takes up any, and if there were any oils, it would get that surface oil. If there were deeper, you might go over that spot a little bit. And then you have the vapor barrier, which is another um, type of liquid that goes down and it creates an, a, a watertight seal. When you have water seeping up from concrete, which it's naturally present, that will ruin the bond of the epoxy to the concrete. So it's an extra expense, but I mean, look at this, uh, thousands of square feet. You know how we work. We always do things with excellence and, and pay attention to detail. I'm happy with paying the extra, I think it was about $5,000 for this high quality vapor barrier to go down. While I got you here, let me show you my vision of what's going on. Now in this back corner is gonna be our state of the art fulfillment room. It's gonna be a combination of assembly and uh, fulfillment. We'll have dual shipping stations based on the product line. So um, it eliminates like cross-contaminating uh, things between two different product lines. Um, it also allows a really comfortable work environment that's not in a noisy shop. It'll be in a climate controlled, clean-ish clean room, not dusty, not dirty. Really keep the, the good quality of the components and their cleanliness clean as we assemble them and then package them and out. Now over here, this is where the majority of the construction is gonna be going on as phase three. So if I haven't said it before, phase one is what we're in right now. Just move electrical, paint, epoxy. Phase two is actually move equipment in so we can have a functioning, uh, fully supported business here. We're not tied to the old location. Phase three is the build out, polish everything, get it like really dialed in. So what you see behind me is totally gonna go. Okay, so as you can see, we've got a lot of work to do. So in the next episode, we're moving machines and I'll show you the strategy we came up with so that we're not down without production. So subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss the next episode. Until then, go innovate your production.